This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. It has been a busy week again, and we've got a lot to cover. There is loads happening in the world of Starship updates with multiple vehicles spotted around the construction site at Boca Chica in Texas. Sadly, of course, we did just witness the SN4 explode violently after what seemed to be a successful static fire, but we have three more prototypes to talk about with the SN5, SN6, and now the SN7. Rocket Lab celebrates three years since the first Electron launch, Virgin also Orbit attempted the first orbital flight demo of Launcher 1, and SpaceX's Crew Dragon Demo 2 launch on Wednesday was scrubbed due to a number of weather issues and then rescheduled for Saturday afternoon. This is going to be an action-packed week. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. So yes, the recent breaking news about SN4 exploding was a little unexpected. We'll talk more about this in a moment, but first let's talk about the other prototypes in the pipeline and we'll come back to this. Now we have three starships in development in various stages of construction with parts seen moving all around the construction yard. Here we see a ring segment for the next iteration of the Starship prototypes, the SN7. So yes, let's just take stock here for those that haven't been following quite as closely. Now the SN5's nose cone skirt went through a little trauma and was bent out of shape here after some strong wind gusts. Since then, SpaceX seemed to have pulled it back out into shape okay, probably with the exception of this massive denting, which we would assume will be worked on some more at some point. We had the SN6 bolt bulkhead sleeving just recently as well. Now we've inspected the thrust dome here quite closely and can't see much change from the previous version. So yes, we believe there are new changes coming and perhaps that will be for the SN7 based on some previous comments from Elon Musk. The quality of the thrust dome here though is looking extremely clean, probably the cleanest that we've seen so far. Let me know though what you think is coming in the comments. I'm really interested to hear everyone's thoughts on that. Now the current thought is that the SN6 won't begin to be fully stacked until the SN5 is moved out of the high bay, or at least well out of the way. The SN5 is looking quite clean at this point, and we haven't spotted a great deal of work going on with that in particular. At this point, we are thinking most of the efforts are going into SN6 components for stacking, and of course the newly spotted SN7. Now recently there was an object described as a block being moved around the launch site. Later this week though, we now believe this to be a mass simulator of some kind, and it has since been fitted to the top of SN4 in place of the weight of a nose cone. Now, we know this due to the wonderful shots taken by Mary here showing these two massive rolls of steel which we believe weigh around 10 tons each and with the other components there, I suspect this would weigh close to 23 tons or so in total, perhaps even a little more. Now, we thought perhaps these may have been slightly offset to allow the single offset Raptor engine to be better balanced out during a flight, but I can't see any evidence of that at this point. So obviously Obviously now that the Starship has exploded, this was really all work for nothing as we won't be seeing any benefit from that mass simulator in future prototypes. Based on the frame by frame footage here, we can see that the mass simulator did look to take flight, so we are waiting to see where that ended up. The static fire itself seemed to have gone okay, but shortly after there was some kind of rupture towards the bottom of the prototype which began venting massive amounts of cryofuels out. We're not sure whether this was some form of rupture in the fuel supply lines or a rupture in the structure itself, but regardless, this certainly didn't look like an intended process was occurring here. At this point, it was really just a matter for an ignition source to catch hold of that vented fuel, and that was the end of SN4. Now, the source of the explosion certainly looks to have originated from underneath the prototype SN4 itself, possibly even around the Raptor engine, which of course would have still been hot from the static fire. It is fairly typical for residual flames to stay active under the Raptor after a static fire, so that could be where the source came from. Many seem to have been thinking that it was actually the flare stack here that ignited it, which just doesn't seem to be the case as far as we can see from this angle. But more information on that will come soon, I'm sure. These static fires are risky, especially with these being prototypes. There is, of course, an adequate safety zone when these tests are occurring, so there is no risk to people here. It can look deceivingly close from footage here from Mary, but do keep in mind that Mary has got an incredible zoom capability on these cameras, so she is well out of harm way there.
Also seen this week was a great find with the 304L stainless steel rolls arriving as advertised by Elon. Now in some past tweets, Elon did say that some parts of the Starship will use 304L stainless steel due to higher toughness at cryogenic temperatures, with plans then to move to a SpaceX developed alloy in the not too distant future. Now I am no expert in the finer details of alloys, but I do want to share with you a little information about the development at the Starship construction site, as it is a critical point here. The 304L stainless steel has extra low carbon, hence the L in the name, meaning it's more rust resistant and a versatile workable material. Now I have included a link below as well to a very enlightening article by Dan Kay if you want to know more about the issues seen in the welding industry. Like me, you might then see why the 304L is preferred in future iterations of Starship until their own developed alloy is available. I especially like the caution note at the bottom of that article. By as well and truly beware, and it's well worth a read. It also appears that Starhopper has gone from camera hopper to radar hopper with what we now think is a marine radar of some type, possibly a similar model even to this. I haven't seen any concrete theories on what exactly this will be monitoring, so as always, please do leave a comment letting me know what you think. I'd love to hear it. Now, Lab Padre also recently took to the skies over Boca Chica for a bird's eye view of the launch site. Of notable mention here is the increased size of the landing pad as we can see here. A great deal of tidying up has been done as well with non-essential equipment and scrap being relocated to an adjoining area. Beautiful footage there as always. Thank you Lab Padre for your incredible work. Go and check out the full flight here. The link is in the description. So yes, a massive thank you to Boca Chica Gal and NASA Spaceflight for the continual coverage of all of this awesome information. Onwards to testing with the SN5. As soon as the launch structure is repaired and the debris is cleared away, we'll soon see the SN5 rolling down the road to start pressure testing. If you want to know a little bit more about what that process will look like, I have a more in-depth video talking about this process from the SN4. While you're here, of course, please do consider subscribing. There is loads more news coming with Crew Dragon and Starlink as well, and I'd love to share all that with you. A massive thank you everyone almost 150,000 subscribers already I can't believe it it was only really a few months ago that I passed 100,000 thanks so much for all of your support it really does mean a huge amount now obviously all of this news has played out around the Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission. We were of course really looking forward to sharing the first crew launch of the Crew Dragon to the International Space Station on Wednesday, but as you all know by now that launch was scrubbed due to a number of weather issues in the area. So yes, we're eagerly awaiting the next attempt coming up very shortly after this video is released. Hopefully the weather is going to hold out for that. If not, another attempt is scheduled in for Sunday, assuming that the weather holds out for that day as well. Now for those of that may not know about the reasons why this is such a big deal, this is the first crewed mission to launch into orbit from America since the Space Shuttle retired back in 2011, almost a decade ago now. Just amazing footage released as well with Elon Musk here tweeting out a sunrise from earlier in the week, and then another gorgeous shot of a sunset heading into Tuesday morning. Now interestingly there was a slight hiccup with a chilled water loop around the strongback structure which holds the Falcon 9 up prior to launch, so the entire rocket with the Crew Dragon was lowered down to take a closer look at all of that. No big problems there and the rocket was raised back up the same day. Beautiful shots there of course by Spaceflight now showing some of the action there taking place. Now during that attempted flight on Wednesday before the scrub, a bunch of us had grouped up in a live stream which was a heck of a lot of fun. Keep an eye out for us tweeting out live stream links for the next attempt which we're just in the process of trying to organise right now. This is going to be an incredible week. Very best of luck to the entire crew at NASA and SpaceX for the upcoming flight. We're all here waiting and watching and of course I'll be certainly covering events here in the next episode as well. Now I think it's also worth a shout out here to Rocket Lab as well. The start of the week marked three years since Rocket Lab launched its very first electron rocket from Launch Complex 1 on the North Island of New Zealand. This site incredibly is licensed to launch rockets every 72 hours for 30 years so that speaks volumes for the plans that Rocket Lab have for servicing the small satellite sector in a rapid manner. The first mission was named It's a Test and it became the first launch of an orbital class rocket from a private launch site. Although reaching space, an anomaly in equipment on the ground rather than the vehicle itself caused the Electron to not achieve its intended orbit. Of course, since that first mission, Rocket Lab has had incredible success. For those of you that may be unfamiliar, the Electron is a two-stage launch vehicle made from a lightweight carbon composite material with the first stage having 
having a cluster of nine engines. The second stage has one identical engine, but it's vacuum optimized in that it's got a larger expansion nozzle optimized for flight once out of the atmosphere. Now the second stage also has three batteries and a neat process of shedding mass by ejecting two depleted batteries in a process that they call hot swapping at around the seven minute mark of the flight. Now the Rutherford engine design behind the Electron rocket was named after Ernest Rutherford, a New Zealand born physicist who is known as the father of nuclear physics. In an amazing multi award winning career of discovery he most notably went on to be awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. So quite an amazing individual there who is more than deserving of being honoured in this way. The Rutherford engine uses liquid oxygen and kerosene as the propellant, very similar I guess to other vehicles such as the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy. It is quite a popular fuel combination because the density of these liquids means that the volume of the propellant tanks can be low which results in a high mass ratio for the rocket as well. The ingenious rocket has software in place of hardware driving the electric propellant motors which are powered by a lithium polymer battery. The engines themselves just blow my mind as well with the primary components of the engines being 3D printed using a technique that they call uh, electron beam melting. Now this sees the raw materials placed in a vacuum and heated by an electron beam at temperatures up over 1000 degrees Celsius or around 1830 degrees Fahrenheit. Now another unique feature of the Electron is the kick stage which gives flexibility for delivering multiple payloads to different orbits using the multiple engine burns and this kick stage is powered by a Curie engine which is also 3D printed and is designed to be able to deorbit itself leaving no debris in space. So to date there have been 11 flights total for Rocket Lab and just the one initial hiccup on that first flight a fantastic achievement no matter how you look at it. Now more recently Rocket Lab have had their eyes set on reusability of the first stage using parachutes and helicopters to actually catch that first stage after it re-enters the atmosphere. Now as 70% of the time and money is spent on building those first stages the goal of rapid weekly launches will rely on a quick turnaround so rapid reusability is certainly going to help there if they can actually nail that. Now in my tweet here to Peter Beck asking which launch was the most nerve wracking for him, Peter kindly replied stating that he has never been relaxed in this business. I take this to mean that getting to space is hard and that more than likely every single launch is as nerve wracking as the last. Now if you've enjoyed what we've talked about here so far consider taking a second to tap that like button. That just helps tell YouTube that you value the content so it is recommended more often and that then helps me to share more of these awesome developments with you. Now Virgin Orbit scheduled the first orbital flight demo of Launcher 1 which is a two stage air launch to orbit rocket and that was a very interesting outcome with the rocket firing up after being dropped from Cosmic Girl the 747. We'll talk more about that in a moment but real quick this video is sponsored by Brilliant who have been amazing supporters of my channel. In these current times you may be on the lookout for online math and science resources and whether you're a student looking to advance ahead, a professional learning new skills or someone who just wants to use this time to understand the world better you should check out the awesome content with Brilliant. This mathematical fundamentals course just as an example is not about memorizing formulas it's about problem solving it's about looking at patterns and predicting the future of those patterns and it's about solving complex problems by using deductive reasoning to turn those problems into simple ones. Brilliant will teach you how to apply these techniques along with the skills to think creatively and strategically to solve each challenge. If you are naturally curious and would like to check this out for yourself then get Brilliant Premium to learn something new every day. Brilliant's thought provoking math, science and computer science content helps guide you to mastery by taking complex concepts and breaking them up into bite sized understandable chunks. Thank you very much as always to Brilliant for their support in this channel and if you would like to help support me and would like to give it a try go to brilliant.org slash Marcus House. The first 200 people will get 20% off the first year of Brilliant Premium. The link is in the description below. So yes, Virgin Orbit scheduled the first orbital launch demo of Launcher 1, a two-stage air launch to orbit rocket for Sunday, May 24th. The planned test was postponed due to a sensor glitch on the booster. The plan, of course, was to flight test Launcher 1 over the Pacific Ocean by releasing it from the carrier aircraft, a 747 called Cosmic Girl, once they reached 35,000 feet. The dummy payload was intended to reach a low orbit, which would allow it to quickly fall back to Earth, burning up in the process. Now, the CEO of 
Virgin Orbit, Dan Hart, did say after the first attempt that this is a new launch vehicle and that it would likely not succeed on the first attempt, so the hopes weren't overly high. On Monday, May 25th, a second attempt was made, taking off from the spaceport, also home to Virgin Galactic. Cosmic Girl released Launcher 1, and after a five second freefall, the first stage ignited, and shortly thereafter, an anomaly occurred and the test flight was then terminated. Cosmic Girl and the crew landed safely back home shortly after that. Heartfelt messages followed from many supporters and also, as we see here, from Elon Musk and Peter Beck from Rocket Lab. They may be in opposing camps, so to speak, but Team Space is well and truly evident here, and it's great to see such wide support around the amazing players in this industry. Very nice touch there, guys. So yes, we'll see Virgin Orbit back for another try soon, I'm sure, especially given that multiple launch vehicles are in production right now. So best of luck for the next test flight, guys. We're sure you'll have a better success on that next one. Now, just quickly, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons here. You are all quite literally turning this dream of mine of creating this content from a hobby into something much more significant. If you like what I do and would like to join our awesome patrons here, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. You can interact with me more directly via the included roles in Discord. You can check out some more exclusive patron-only content, and you can also have your name listed right here like these other amazing people. A massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be a part of this, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video last week talking about the upcoming Demo 2 launch, Starship updates, and the incredible little X-37B military space plane. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.